Well, this month is Heart Month, and a new study shows people who have heart attacks in the United States are far more likely to be readmitted to the hospital within 30 days than people in 16 other countries. Why is that? Well, that's why Yukon Health Center has put some guidelines in place to keep patients from revisiting. Here to explain is Dr. Jason Ryan, a cardiologist at Yukon. Dr. Ryan, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. So let's talk about what some researchers are saying might be to blame. They're saying that shorter hospital stays in the U.S. as opposed to with other hospitals around the world and around mm. different countries. Mm. What is Yukon Health Center doing to kind of turn things around? Right. Well, one thing that's important to remember is that for patients, the transition from the hospital to back home is a huge change. Mm -hmm. They go from an environment where they're surrounded by nurses and doctors 24 hours a day to an environment where they really may have no one around to help them. So that transition from hospital home is an enormous change. Mm -hmm. And I think we haven't done as good a job as we could in this country of managing that change by preparing patients for discharge, by getting them the services they need when they go back into the community, and by really providing them with access to their doctors and nurses when they have questions and new problems crop up. And that's what we've tried to focus on at UConn with our hospital to home program. So that's one of the protocols is to make sure that when you go home, the recovery process really initially yeah. begins. But what else have you all been uh, you know, mandating? to make sure that your patients, your heart patients, are not readmitted. Yeah, so many of our heart patients come into the hospital, especially heart attack patients, like you mentioned, on no medicines, and we'll go home on five to ten medications. This is an enormous change. How are you going to take those every day? When are you going to take them? Do you take them with meals? When do you get refills? Often they'll go from a time where they may have not seen a doctor for many years to needing to see a doctor sometimes every few months. This is a huge educational component mm -hmm. to managing your condition that people really have to be prepared for. So it's educational. It's yes. about informing the patient and perhaps their loved right. ones who are going to to be right. the caregivers but let's talk about how Yukon now ranks it's proven successful these new uh, protocols how does Yukon right. rank so we've been working very hard especially for another condition related to heart attacks mm -hmm. called heart failure where the heart muscle doesn't pump as strongly as it should mm -hmm. and the readmission rates for heart failure are much much higher than for heart attack about one in every four patients leaves the hospital and comes back within 30 days so mm -hmm. we've made it a priority to try and drive those rates as low as possible by transitioning people to home and we've now achieved rates that are lower than the state average, but more importantly for our patients now, they go home, they know who to call if they have problems, they know what medicines to take, they know what foods to eat, and if anything develops when they're at home, they can get through to us because they've got 24-7 hour, 24 access to their doctors and nurses at UConn. Great stuff, and this leads to my next question is let's talk about the latest research into how to manage the disease through lifestyle changes, yeah. through medications, as you mentioned, so that a trip to the hospital doesn't right. happen again. So those are other things. What else are you right. telling patients? Yeah, diet and lifestyle are a big part of it and mm -hmm. actually hasn't changed. Uh, my grandmother was a doctor in the 40s and 50s and the lifestyle recommendations are identical. Really? Low that says a lot. Eating, low salt eating. Eating less salt leads to less retention of fluid mm -hmm. which leads to less symptoms of heart problems like breathing trouble and swollen ankles and fatigue. So it's the good old-fashioned stuff of eating a healthy diet that's low in mm -hmm. salt and fat and getting regular exercise and we really emphasize this for our patients it's important for anybody but once you have a heart condition it's very important that's interesting because you ask your grandparents yeah. how were things and they they tell you the exact same thing the yeah. tried and true methods right. that still work today right. but we forget right. that those are the old-fashioned ways yeah. that do work right yeah once in a while people come to see me and they want to know if a new procedure or a heart transplant <laughs> or something is will help them and oftentimes it turns out to be the good old-fashioned yeah. stuff of taking your medicines eating right and getting a good relationship with a doctor who can help help you when things develop. Well, our viewers at home, if they want to get additional information, yeah. some, some more uh, important information, where can they go? Is, could they go online and get? Yeah. We've actually created a website called hearttalk.org, mm -hmm. and at UConn we made our own videos for heart patients mm -hmm. on how they can live well, stay well, and stay out of the hospital. So really, for anyone who wants to learn more, that's the perfect place to go. There are also free videos for nurses so they can know what to teach their patients who have heart conditions so they can stay well. You know what? Sometimes you forget, and you have mm -hmm. to kind of refresh yeah. your mind, you yeah. refresh your memory. Right. So going online and checking that could right. be very important, right. no, very it's a, essential. It's a great resource. We've built it for patients and families so they can get the information they need. Dr. Grind, some great information. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.